Hi everyone, I'm Melissa Green, a Technology Accessibility Specialist with the Center for Instructional Technologies Technology Accessibility Team. Our team works to ensure that all technology users, including those with disabilities, have a functional and accessible technology experience with the university's websites and the technologies we use for teaching, learning, and administrative functions. You can find more information about our efforts on our website at accessibility.ua.edu. Today's session covers how to use Adobe Acrobat Pro DC to create PDFs that are accessible to people with disabilities. And that involves uh, talking about what it means for a PDF to be accessible, generating accessible PDFs from Microsoft Office and other applications, and using Acrobat's Accessibility Checker and Make Accessible Action Wizard to evaluate the accessibility of a PDF and make basic accessibility fixes. Uh, when we offer this session in the classroom, it is as a hands-on workshop. Um, on the screen, and I'll paste it into the chat as well, is a link you can use to access the exercise files um, that we use when this is taught in the classroom as a hands-on workshop. I'll just take a moment to type that URL in the chat. Uh, most folks usually um, have a hard time trying to follow along in the exercise, exercise files while doing the webinar. Um, if that's a challenge for you as well, I will be providing the recording of this webinar at a later date. Um, so you can go back and watch or listen to the webinar while you work with those files. But um, if you have multiple screens or used to kind of uh, multitasking, it's, it's fine if you wanna work along this morning as well. But the way I'm gonna approach it is just to describe everything I'm doing in great detail so that you can go back and follow along with the files on your own later. A quick moment for housekeeping. This slide includes a picture of me. I have my webcam turned off, but I thought you might like to see who you're speaking with today. To improve audio quality, I have muted everyone by default, but when you want to talk, you can click the microphone icon in the Zoom control bar to mute or unmute yourself. You can also choose to have your camera on or off. Please do mute your microphone when you're not speaking. When I'm talking or sharing my screen, please write in the chat box and let me know if you can't see or hear something. Uh, you're welcome to use the chat box throughout. I may not be watching closely while I'm talking, but I will do my best to check in every once in a while. And if I don't see your comment or question immediately, um, I will come back to those at the end. As I mentioned, the session is being recorded and I'll send you a link to that recording when it's available along with links to resources shared during the session and those exercise files. Uh, with that being said, we'll go ahead and get started. Before we talk about ensuring our PDFs are accessible, let's talk about when to use PDFs in the first place. Portable Document Format, or PDF, is great for distributing documents that need to be printed, but it often isn't the best format for making information available online. Uh, one of the fundamental principles of web accessibility is that HTML content will almost always be more accessible than non-HTML content, including PDF files. So before creating a PDF and putting it on the web, you might ask yourself these questions. Is the information meant to be read online? If so, rendering that information as a web page may be preferable. A web page can be opened in the browser without special software or apps and displayed in a way that's responsive to the size of the screen. A web page contains navigation and easy access to other site content. A web page is easy to discover, the contents of a web page are easy to search, and a web page is easily shared with a link. Is this an application, survey, or form with fields that a user will fill out? Digital forms are often easier to create and collect data from than PDF forms. Will the information need to be updated frequently? 
Uh, making the content available as a web page rather than a PDF means you can quickly access it and update it as often as needed instead of having to find and edit a source document. Save it as a new PDF, make accessibility fixes in Acrobat, delete the old version of the file, then upload the new version and update any links to it. Finally, can the information be printed just as easily from a web page? Uh, like PDFs, web pages can also be printed, especially when your site has a good print style sheet. So unless a document is intended for print, uh, like a poster or a flyer, PDF may not be the best format to distribute it, uh, particularly when it comes to the web. But if you must use a PDF on a website, um, you can ensure its contents are accessible by providing them in another format in addition to the PDF. So for example, providing the information as text on a web page with a link to the PDF included, um, or providing um, the source document um, as well so that the user has a choice between the PDF and let's say a Word document. Um, and by creating that PDF with accessibility in mind. The first step in creating an accessible PDF from a Microsoft Office document is to ensure that the original Office document is accessible. The accessibility of the PDF depends on the accessibility of the source document. Creating a source document that is accessible from the start or correcting the accessibility issues in the source document is much easier than repairing an inaccessible PDF. Plus, each error you fix in a source document only has to be fixed once, as opposed to every time you generate a PDF. Before creating a PDF from a Microsoft Office file, you should first evaluate the accessibility of that file. One of the ways you can do this is by using the Microsoft Office Accessibility Checker. Like the Microsoft Office Spelling Checker tells you about possible spelling errors, Accessibility Checker in Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and Outlook on the web tells you about possible accessibility issues in your Office files. In newer versions of Office, you can access the Accessibility Checker via the Review tab, um, along with the spelling and grammar tools. In older versions, you can access the Accessibility Checker by going to the File menu and selecting File, Info, Check for Issues, Check Accessibility. I'm going to switch gears right now and open up one of the exercise files. So from the exercise files, this is uh, the UA Traditions Before Word document. So it's a Word document titled UA Traditions Before. This is a Microsoft Word document that contains information about some of the traditions at the University of Alabama. It also contains a number of accessibility issues that will become clear when we use the accessibility checker. We'll do that now by going to File, Info, Check for Issues, Check Accessibility. After the Accessibility Checker inspects your content, it reports the inspection results in the right sidebar panel, categorizing them as errors, warnings, and tips. If people with disabilities are unable to read content in the file, the Accessibility Checker classifies that as an error. Uh, most of the errors in this document involve missing alternative text. So the accessibility checker in the right sidebar under errors is telling us that we have one, two, three, four, five instances of missing alt text. The other error that appears in this particular file is no header row specified. That occurs once in a table. If content in the file is difficult for people with disabilities to read, the Accessibility Checker gives a warning. Uh, warnings in this file include a link with unclear text and two objects, uh, pictures in this case, picture two and picture four, that are not in line. 
There's an additional category that you'll sometimes see in the ex accessibility checker inspection results that we don't see in this document, um, but that's a category titled tips. Um, that just provides some suggestions when there's content in the file that people with disabilities can read, but could possibly be better organized or could be presented in a way that can improve their experience. So my favorite thing about the accessibility checker is that it not only indicates where there's a problem and why the problem presents an accessibility barrier, it also tells you how to fix it. So for example, um, our second type of error, no hetero specified. I'm going to select the instance where that error occurs, the table. So I'm selecting it by clicking on it in the inspection results. And when I do that, a couple of things happen. Um, one, on the left side of the screen, I'm taken directly to the table in the document where that issue is happening. And then on the right side of the screen, underneath the inspection results, um, the information has updated to address this particular error. So we're told that we need to fix this because, and I'm reading here from uh, the text under why fix, a table header row contains column headings that provide context and aid navigation of the data in the table. We're then told how to fix this and given a series of steps. How to fix, to specify a header row, select the table and highlight the top header rows. So that's actually been done for me when I navigated to the table. Step two, click on the table tools layout tab. So because we have a table in focus in the document, we have a table tools tab in the ribbon at the top of the page. So I'm following the instructions and selecting the table tools layout tab. Step three, click repeat header rows in the data group to mark the selected rows as header. So in the data group of this tab, um, one of the options is repeat header rows. I'm going to follow the instructions provided by the accessibility checker and select this. And as I do that, if you'll watch the inspection results, this error will actually uh, disappear because it's been corrected. So I'm gonna select it now. And we no longer have that table uh, heading error in our list of errors. So we're not going to go through and, and fix all of these. Um, we don't really have enough time to do that. Um, but the accessibility checker is a great resource. It's not going to catch every single accessibility issue. No automated check can. Uh, but it is a great resource and the process you follow to use it to evaluate and improve the accessibility of a Word file is very similar in PowerPoint, Excel, and Outlook on the web. So because we don't have time to correct all of these warnings and errors, I'm going to close this file, I'll close it now, and switch to a version of the file where these issues have been addressed. So in the exercise files, this Word document is titled UA Traditions After. UA Traditions After Word document. Uh, this is a version of the same Word document where the accessibility issues have been addressed. Um, if you would, just watch my screen for a moment as I switch to a PDF I created from this document. So this is a PDF titled UA Traditions After. I generated it from the corrected Word document. I'm going to open up the Adobe Acrobat tag panel in the left sidebar. To illustrate that tags are present in this document. Although there's a bit more to it than this, when people talk about accessible PDF files, they're usually referring to PDF files that have searchable, selectable text. So text that you can select with your mouse, as I'm doing here with the title of the document, or doing now with the introductory text. So it has actual, uh, digital text, not just a picture of text, and it has tags, as we see in the left sidebar of Acrobat. Tags are the basis of an accessible PDF file. They indicate the structure of the document, communicate the order in which items should be read, and determine exactly which items will be read. 
When you create a PDF from a source document, you want to do so in a way that preserves the accessibility of the source document and includes tags. The way in which you output a PDF from Microsoft Office and other programs has a huge impact on the resulting PDF's accessibility. I created this PDF using the Acrobat PDF Maker plugin. It does have actual text and tags, and when I use the accessibility checker to evaluate its accessibility, it has very few errors. Uh, we'll talk more about the accessibility checker in a few minutes, but I'll just run it very quickly to show you the results. So I'm selecting accessibility, then full check, then start checking. So when I run the accessibility checker on the PDF created from a Word document using the PDF Maker add-in, I only um, have three issues, one outright error, and two items that need a manual check. I'm gonna to switch to another PDF now. This is um, a PDF also created from that same Microsoft Word document, but instead of using the PDF Maker add-in, I used the print menu, uh, and I chose PDF as the printer. When I use the accessibility checker to evaluate this document's accessibility, it has quite a few errors, so I'll do that now. Accessibility, full check, start checking. So same exact document, but quite a few more issues. Um, five issues that pertain to the document as a whole, two issues that pertain to page content, five alternative text issues, and so on. Um, so same, same original Word document, but pretty dramatically different results just based on the way I generated the PDF. Switching to a third PDF now, this is again generated from the same Microsoft Word document, but this time I selected Save As PDF. Um, it has fewer errors than the one I created um, from the print menu, but oh, it has, one more error than the one I created using PDF Maker add-in. So that's just to emphasize that, um, you know, you can do all the work in the source document to make it as accessible as possible, um, and then kind of break that accessibility by not choosing the right way to output it as a PDF. I'm gonna close these just so I don't confuse myself, so we're only working uh, with one version of the after. So I'm gonna go back to um, the Word document, the source document, where the accessibility issues have been addressed. When you install Adobe Acrobat Pro DC on your computer, Acrobat also installs an add-in called PDF Maker that enables you to create PDFs from within Microsoft Office files. When the PDF Maker add-in is enabled, a tab named Acrobat will appear alongside the other tabs in Microsoft Word. So we have Home, Insert, Design, Layout, and so on. And at the far right of the list of tabs, we have Acrobat. This is what you want to use when generating a PDF document from your source files. When you click on or select the Acrobat tab, it shows you all of the options available within the PDF Maker. In the Create Adobe PDF group, where I'm hovering my mouse now, I'm selecting the Preferences button. These are the settings that are going to be used to generate the PDF file. There's a lot of options here, uh, even more if you go into the Advanced Settings, I'm not gonna go into any more detail about this except to point out this checkbox right here. Enable accessibility and reflow with tagged Adobe PDF. You want this to be checked. Looking at the second checkbox that's kind of nested under that, labeled enable advanced tagging. Um, you might assume that Enabling this would make the tagging even better in some way. Um, advanced must be better, right? Um, but I have found it preferable to not enable this second option. 
because when I have it enabled, I more often than not end up removing a lot of extraneous tags. Uh, you might experiment, it with, experiment with that on your own, uh, but for the documents I create, I typically leave this unchecked. Um, the folks that I've taken training from that have kind of educated me on this, um, that's their recommendation as well. So I encourage you to do the same, leave that unchecked. Once you've ensured that enable accessibility and reflow with tagged Adobe PDF is checked, you can select OK. And now that defines the preferences for how the PDF file is going to be created. Those settings should stick. Um, you shouldn't have to check or change them each time you create a PDF from Office. That's just something to take a look at the first time you use this tool. To generate the PDF file, we're going to select the Create PDF option. I'm going to give the file a descriptive name. Um, I've already got several here with UA Traditions after, so I'm just going to add a two to it to help me distinguish that. I'm going to select Save and the PDF will be generated. You can't see it. Let's see if I can drag it over. Yeah, as PDF Maker is creating the PDF, that it runs through a series of steps kind of quickly, um, but one of those, you might have caught a glimpse of it, was um, related to tags. So I'm back in Adobe Acrobat Pro. Um, just This is the PDF that resulted from the Word document. I'm going to quickly show you one other way that you can generate a PDF um, from within Acrobat itself. And you can do that by opening up Acrobat and selecting File, Create, PDF from File, and then navigating to the file you wish to save as a PDF. You might ask you know, wh why would I want to do that? Why wouldn't I just sort of start the process from within um, the source file? That's because there's some slight differences in how uh, PDFs are rendered um, between Office on a Mac and Office on a PC. So on the screen right now is a screenshot of PDF Maker in Word 2016 on the Mac operating system. Um, so you can use PDF Maker and Word 2016 on a Mac. Um, however, there are not a bunch of options like there are in Windows. Um, you'll have just Create PDF um, or possibly a couple others that have been added uh, since I took this screenshot. There's a, a little quirk with creating a PDF from a PowerPoint on a Mac. And that is that the PDF you create from using Acrobat and PowerPoint is less accessible than a PDF you would create from using the Acrobat file menu, as I demonstrated just a moment ago. So that's a, a very specific little quirk. So it applies to PowerPoint 2016 on a Mac. If you want to create a PDF from a PowerPoint, originate that process from within Acrobat versus um, from within PowerPoint. You'll just have better results uh, with less errors to fix. Whether you're working on a Windows machine or a Mac, um, there are two common approaches to creating PDFs that we do not recommend. First, avoid using print to PDF. If your end goal is an accessible document, PDFs created through the print process may only preserve the text and images, the tags and other accessibility information may be lost. Second, when saving an Office file, you can choose from many different file types, including PDF. Uh, we don't recommend creating PDFs in this way because again, some of the accessibility information may be lost or converted incorrectly, making the resulting PDF less accessible and harder to review and repair in Acrobat. Uh, but if you must use the Save as PDF option, let's say you don't have access to a computer with Acrobat Professional, um, 
make sure you specify the option to document structure tags for accessibility. I'll show that really quickly. So I'm going into Word, I'm going to File, Save As, and again, if I didn't have Acrobat Pro, this might be how I saved this PDF. I'm just gonna save it on my desktop. I'm gonna choose Save As Type PDF. I'm selecting options, which opens up a dialog box. We want to make sure that document structure tags for accessibility is checked, and it is. Um, like the PDF maker preferences, once you set this once, the setting should stay. It's not something you have to do every time you create a PDF, but I just want to point that out. So, in terms of um, sort of best results when creating PDFs from files, Office files in particular. The best option is to use the PDF Maker add-in. Uh, the next best option is to choose Save As PDF. Um, what you want to avoid whenever possible is Print to PDF. Okay, so I am going back into Acrobat, opening up this UA Traditions After Document. Uh, that we generated just a moment ago. Once you've created your PDF, there's typically a few touch-ups that need to be made to make that PDF fully accessible. Adobe Acrobat Pro DC offers two primary tools to assist content authors in creating accessible PDFs. There's the Accessibility Checker, Full Check, and the Make Accessible Action. If working with PDFs is something you do regularly, you might want to make sure both of these tools are easily accessible from your tools menu. So I do this regularly, so I do have shortcuts to both the accessibility tool set and the action wizard tool set that includes the make accessible action wizard. Um, I have those shortcuts here in my sidebar. If you don't have those, you can add them um, by going to tools and searching for them. I'm just searching for accessibility. Um, if this was not already present, um, instead of open, it would say add, and I would select that to add that tool. Same thing with Action Wizard. You can search for Action Wizard and then choose add to add a shortcut to that in the tools. So returning to this PDF document, I am opening the Accessibility Tools panel by clicking on it. And I'm going to select the Full Check command. You can use the Accessibility Full Check command to perform a thorough check for many characteristics of accessible PDFs, such as the use of alternate, alternative text on images, the presence of tags, document language, fonts that can be mapped reliably to Unicode text. It's possible to choose which kinds of accessibility issues to look for in the full check by adjusting the accessibility checker options, which is what this dialog box is. There are also options to view and save the results. The accessibility full check is the tool I prefer to use in the scenario we've looked at so far today. So a situation in which we have access to and the ability to change the source document. We've already taken steps to ensure that source document is as accessible as possible before creating a PDF using the Acrobat PDF Maker add-in. So if I'm the author of the PDF, I have the source document, I've now created a PDF, my next step would be to use this full check to check to see um, if there are any issues that need to be addressed. We're gonna do that now. Um, I've selected the Accessibility Tools panel. I selected the Full Check command to open the Accessibility Checker Options dialog. Uh, note that you can create an accessibility report to create a report of the findings and save it as HTML or attach it to the document. 
Under page range, we're going to use the default all pages to check all pages, but note that you can select a page range to, to check subsections of a document. We're going to leave the checking options as is, but note that you can specify exactly what you want to check. And then we're gonna select the start checking button to begin the full check. Once a report has been run, the issues that have been found are displayed in the accessibility checker panel in the left sidebar. The results tree displays um, several different states for each rule check. And I'll expand this so we can look at some examples of those. One of the possible results you'll get is passed, which is represented by a green check mark. This means the item passed the accessible, accessibility check. Uh, passed manually means the item was marked passed by manual inspection. We're going to do that in just a moment. Skipped by user. Um, means that a rule was not selected in the accessibility checker options dialog box. Needs manual check, um, which we have a couple of here. Those are represented by a blue question mark. This means that the full check feature could not check the item automatically and that we um, as a human have to verify the item manually. And then we have failed, which is represented by a red X meaning that the item did not pass the accessibility check. So our document has received a pass or needs manual check for each rule um, except title. To fix a failed check, um, what you want to do is right click on the item in the accessibility checker panel or control click if you're not, if you don't have right click set up on a Mac. So right click and this opens up a context menu with several options. Uh, fix, which is not always present, but is present for many of the items. Um, if you select fix, Acrobat either fixes the item automatically or displays a dialog box prompting the user to fix the item by entering information or making a choice. Um, so, for example, a dialog might be displayed, allowing the user to enter alternative text for an image. Skip rule uh, deselects this option in the accessibility checker options dialog box for future checks of this document and will change the item status to skip. Explain opens the online help. Check again runs the checker again on all items. Um, you might choose this option after modifying one or more items. Show report displays the accessibility port, report for the page range or document with links to tips on how to repair failed checks. The link to tips is the same as the help that is provided by the explain item. Once the report is shown, a new option to attach the report also appears. Then finally, options, which opens the accessibility checker options dialog box where checking options can be set. So we're going to right click on each of the issues uh, reported in our document. Uh, we'll start with logical reading order, which Acrobat flagged because it needs to be manually checked. I'm right clicking on logical reading order and selecting explain to get some guidance on what this means. So if you see fix, you want to pick fix. Um, if fix is not present, you want to pick explain. So when you select explain, Acrobat opens up a new uh, internet browser window or tab. It takes you directly to the portion of the Acrobat Pro uh, documentation that addresses this issue. Um, so the error we got was for title. And I, the help documentation tells us that this reports whether there is a title in the Acrobat application title bar. To fix the title automatically, select title in the accessibility checker tab and choose fix from the options menu. Enter the document title in the description dialog box. Deselect leave as is if necessary. Or to fix the title manually, 
Okay, sorry, I just realized that I started talking about uh, logical reading order and then skipped over to title. We'll do title. Apologies, I haven't had my coffee yet this morning. <laughs> so title is one of those where there's a fix option or there's an explain. So I'm selecting explain just to demonstrate that Acrobat does take you directly to the portion in the online help that explains how to fix it. Um, so it does walk through a series of steps, how to fix the title manually. Uh, one, choose file, properties, description, enter a title in the title text box, click initial view, and then choose document title from the show drop-down list, click OK to close the description dialog box. Um, but also there is that option to fix automatically. So whenever that's available, we wanna go with that. So I'm gonna right click and choose fix. We get a dialog box, box that prompts us to type in a title. So for whatever reason, um, when you save a Microsoft Word document as a PDF, even if you have a title specified um, by styling it as a title, using Microsoft's Office's built-in styles or in the metadata for the file, that doesn't necessarily pass over to Acrobat. So we'd simply need to type in the title of the document, University of Alabama Traditions. And when we say okay, Acrobat is gonna do a couple of things. It's going to specify that that's the title of this document. And it's also going to change um, what is shown in the, uh, at the very top of the, the page. So right now what's being shown is the file name, not the file title. The name of the file is UA Traditions After Two. Sometimes our file names are not uh, very reader friendly. Um, they include things like dates or version numbers. Um, what we want is the title, not the file name to display instead. So I'm gonna select okay. And that um, has changed the result for title to past. And if I save, we can see that now the title University of Alabama Traditions is displayed instead of the file name. So that's the workflow. When you get um, anything other than past, you want to right click on it and choose either fix or explain. Now we'll take a look at these other two uh, that need a manual check, logical reading order and color contrast. Logical reading order um, is something that has to be checked manually. If I right click on it and choose explain, we get an explanation of that from the Acrobat help documentation. It's a brief explanation, doesn't tell us a lot. It just says verify this rule check manually. Make sure that the reading order displayed in the tags panel coincides with the logical reading order of the document. So returning to the PDF, uh, the first thing we want to do is open the tags panel to display the tags. And we want to make sure that the order of these tags is logical, that it makes sense. And um, in most cases, that means that it coincides with the order in which the content is displayed visually. So the way to check this is to uh, select with your mouse the topmost tag in the tag tree. So that's the section tag, I'm clicking on it now. Um, that's a top level tag encompassing a lot of different things. Everything that falls under that tag is highlighted in fuchsia in the document. Um, there are fuchsia rectangles um, surrounding everything that falls under that tag. I'm then going to use the down arrow on my keyboard to navigate down through that tag tree paying attention to where the fuchsia rectangles appear. So I'm hitting down. The first tag in the tag tree is H1 for a top level heading. And we can see that that tag has been applied to the text University of Alabama Traditions. That's the first thing that will be read. Well, that's logical. That's the first thing that visually appears in the document. Hit down. The next thing um, that will be read is figure. So in this case, the alternative text for the figure, that's logical. It's the next thing that appears in the document. 
hitting down. The next thing that will be read is um, the text that's tagged as a paragraph that starts with the words, the University of Alabama is a school. And we just continue down that tag tree, paying attention to those highlighted rectangles on the right side of the page, making sure they're being highlighted in an order that makes sense. That's logical reading order. I'm not going to go too in depth on what to do um, if the reading order isn't logical. We really get into this in our PDF remediation uh, workshop, but I'll just tell you quickly um, in case you're anxious to, to get started doing this before that workshop that you can uh, move tags by clicking and dragging them. So let's pretend for some reason that we wanted the text under paragraph to be read before uh, the alternative text associated with the figure. We can move that tag above figure in the tag tree. So you can click and drag. You can also right click and cut and then paste a tag to reorder it. So manual uh, check of a logical reading order involves opening the tags panel and using the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard to check to see the order in which the content in the document is highlighted. That's the order in which a screen reader will read that content. Um, one question we get regularly is, um, how, how much of the reading order of the document do we have to check? This is a short document, it's only five pages long. Um, it's pretty easy to check the entire document, but a lot of times we're working with much longer documents, much more complex documents with more tags. Um, I'm of the mind that you don't have to check the entire document. What I would do is select um, a couple of pages that are representative of the types of pages in the document as a whole. So for example, um, this document is comprised of pages that are all text or text and pictures. So I'd pick pages like that to check. Um, you also want to check anything that's kind of uniquely formatted, like a table, um, a table of contents, um, an index, references, footnotes. Um, those are all things that you're going to want to check. But I think it's okay to, to evaluate a representative sample of the document rather than tabbing through the entire tag tree. Um, a representative sample will give you a good idea of whether your reading order uh, needs some fixes or not. So returning to the accessibility checker results, um, let's say that we've checked the logical reading order for this document. We found that it's okay. We can now right click on that and choose pass. And now that's when we get that passed manually status with a green check mark. One more item to be addressed in this document, and that's color contrast, which needs a manual check. So color contrast refers to the amount of contrast between the text in the foreground and the background color or the page color. Um, so Acrobat doesn't have something built in to check this for you, which is why it's prompting you to check this manually. Honestly, I check this in the source document. By the time you're getting to the point where you've saved a PDF, if there is a problem with color, you're going to have to go to the source document to fix that anyway. So I don't want to be doing my color contrast checking at this stage. I want to do it in the design stage when I'm creating the source document. So um, there are a lot of tools out there you can use to do that. Um, I'll include those in the resource links. One is the WebAIM color contrast checker which not only lets you check to see if your color choices meet the contrast ratios specified by the web content accessibility guidelines, but also helps you pick color combinations that provide sufficient contrast. You enter the hex codes for the background and foreground colors. If your color combination fails to pass the test, you can adjust the lightness slider 
to modify the colors by slight degrees until you get a result that has sufficient contrast. That's a free tool. Uh, you use it online. Another one our team likes is Paciello Group's Color Contrast Analyzer, um, which works on the web and with documents and images on your computer. Um, it is also free, but it's desktop software, so you do need to download and install it. Um, like the WebAIM Checker, you can enter hex codes to check or use an eyedropper tool to select colors to check, um, which is really nice, particularly when you're working with designs that have uh, gradients or overlays. Um, it may be challenging to come up with the exact color code for that. So you could just use the eyedropper to snag that color. And again, I do these checks while working in the authoring tool before I create my PDF, because by the time I make it to the accessibility checker stage in Acrobat, it's going to be much more difficult to make any necessary color changes. I'm gonna go back to that document. Um, I know that the color combinations in this document meet web content accessibility guidelines criteria for contrast. So I'm going to right click on color contrast and choose pass. So now um, for everything that was checked in this document, we have, we have a passing result, either passed out of the gate or we fixed it and it passes um, or we have passed it manually. This version of the Traditions PDF represents a pretty common scenario, um, one in which we had access to a source document that we created with accessibility in mind. We're at least able to edit to address accessibility barriers, but that isn't always the case. Um, if the original source document is not available, we'll need to add accessibility features to the PDF using Acrobat Pro DC. We're going to at least get started doing that now by addressing a more challenging document. Um, if you haven't already, I encourage you to sign up for our advanced PDF workshops where we delve further into fixing or remediating inaccessible PDFs and working with things like scan documents, lists, tables, and forms, but I at least wanted to get started um, show you, showing you an example of this. So I'm opening up another one of the source files. It's a PDF file titled Scanned Document. Opening that up in Acrobat. One thing I make a point to do when I anticipate having to make quite a few accessibility changes to an existing PDF is to save a copy of that file before I get started. Um, if the work gets quite complicated, I might even save at several steps along the way. Um, there's few things worse than building a tag tree or setting the reading order from scratch and then accidentally overriding your work. So my suggestion is to save copies early and often. Uh, that being said, I'm going to save a copy of this file as a scanned document uh, working it's the one I'm working on. All right, the tool we're going to use for this is the Make Accessible Action Wizard. So I'm accessing that tool by going uh, to the tools shortcut, selecting Action Wizard, and then from the actions list, selecting Make Accessible. The Make Accessible action walks you through the steps required to make a PDF accessible. It prompts you to address accessibility issues, such as a missing document description or title. It looks for common elements that need further action, such as scanned text, form fields, tables, and images. And we're gonna use it to enhance the accessibility of this PDF file. So I'm choosing Make Accessible. Um, I'm going to select the blue Start button to begin. Notice that the file to be processed by default is the current file. You can add additional files to work with, but I'm going to stick with this one. I'm selecting the blue start button. And I'm now going to be walked through a series of steps. Uh, first, I'm being prompted to enter a title. 
um, probably because I still have this other PDF open. I'm getting the title for the other PDF, so I'm going to delete it. So I need to enter in a title here. I'm going to title this document Acrobat Pro DC PDF Accessibility. Kind of correspond with the visual title. I'm going to select OK. The Action Wizard will take me to the next step, um, which is recognizing text. So right now, this PDF file does not have any actual digital text in it. It just has an image of text. Um, we can tell that really by the visual appearance. It usually is kind of fuzzy and skewed, uh, but also by attempting to select text with our mouse. We won't be able to do that. So the Action Wizard is prompting us to use optical character recognition to recognize the text in the document. Um, we're going to make the output editable text and images. So we'll get some text and images and select OK. And Acrobat will perform um, that optical character recognition. We're next asked if this document is intended to be used as a fillable form. Um, if it is, we want to choose yes so that Acrobat can attempt to detect form fields. Um, so those would be things like blanks or check boxes. Uh, this particular document doesn't have any of those, so I'm going to say no. We need to set the reading language for the document. This um, helps with reading order and pronunciation for screen readers. So the document uh, language is English. Sometimes you'll have a document that has multiple languages. Um, here you would want to select the language that's used the most in the document. Um, it's also possible to label different portions of the document as being in different languages if necessary. This one's in English entirely, so I'm going to select English and say OK. The next step uh, in the wizard is to set alternate text. So Acrobat will detect figures in this document and display figures with missing alternate text. I'll say OK. Don't have any of those. I'll say OK. And then the final step after going through all these Action Wizard steps is to run that accessibility check. So I'll select Start Checking, and we'll see the results in the left sidebar, and we can then um, start addressing those results. So under Document, we get the ones that we're always going to get, the things that need a manual check, the logical reading order, and the color contrast. Looks like we have an additional issue here under Headings. Um, we got a fail for appropriate nesting. So the way we would go about addressing this is to right click. And if fix were present, we would click fix. But because it's not, we'll choose explain. That will take us to the online help that will provide an explanation of this error. Uh, this rule checks nested headings. When this check fails, headings are not nested properly. To fix the list structure, find the list in the Accessibility Checker panel by right-clicking the failed element and choosing Show in Tags panel. Create elements, change the types of elements, or rearrange existing elements by dragging them. So I'm going to go back and uh, follow the instructions to view this in the Tags panel. And the issue that's being shown here is that this content uh, highlighted in a fuchsia rectangle fixing, fixing tags is tagged as a second level heading. Um, headings are to be nested, which means they need to follow a hierarchical order. The first heading in a document should always be H1 for heading one, then heading two, then heading three, and so on. So it's flagged that uh, this is here as a heading level two, um, but there is no heading level one. So a couple different ways we could fix this. Um, if this actually should be a heading level one, we could right click on it, choose properties, and change that type of tag to heading level one. In this case, though, I think it's appropriate that that is a heading level two. What we actually need to do is add 
a tag um, for the top level heading Adobe Acrobat Pro PDF accessibility. Um, and we can do that in the order pane. So we can show the reading order panel, select that text, and re-tag it as a heading level one. If we do that and go back to the accessibility check and recheck, so check again, we now get a passing result. So that is how you use the Make Accessible Action Wizard to address a slightly more challenging scenario. Um, our PDF still may not be fully accessible. We haven't done the manual color contrast or reading order checks. Um, if you do the reading order check, there is actually an issue with the list not being tagged properly. Um, but it should give you an idea of how the tool works. So the two primary tools in Acrobat that are there to address accessibility are the accessibility tool set, which includes the full check and the make accessible action wizard. My preferred workflow is to use the full check when I'm working with a document that um, I have created or someone has created and we have a we're fairly certain it's been created with accessibility in mind. It just needs to be reviewed and minor touch-ups to be made. The action wizard is a better fit for things like scanned documents or files uh, for which you don't have access to the source file and more work needs to be done. It's really gonna start you from scratch with that document. All right, I'm gonna stop here. Um, I hope that you found this useful and that you won't hesitate to reach out to us if we can help you out as you put what you learned into practice. You can contact our team by visiting accessibility.ua.edu or via email at accessibility.ua.edu. Um, I've listed that contact information in the chat along with my direct email address, mf green one at ua.edu. Um, that's all I have. I'm going to stop the recording and um, see if anyone has any questions or thoughts to share.